a global lessons for the Nigerian context around tax optimization. May I call Dr. Neil McCullough to share his perspective? Thank you. I'm going to be speaking about some lessons which we have learned uh, from global best practice and particularly in Sub-Saharan Africa. I'm going to start with a commercial. A lot of the lessons which I'm going to be discussing are described in great detail and in excellent prose actually in this book Taxing Africa uh, which is a publication by Professor Mick Moore, uh, Wilson Pritchard and Odd Helga Fjellstad from the International Centre for Taxation and Development uh, which is based in the UK but which has in several countries throughout uh, Africa uh, excellent networks, including in Nigeria. So I want to give a little bit of a shout out to the Nigerian Tax Research Network, uh, led by uh, Mustafa and Oli and Michael, who are all here. And there will be an excellent workshop over the next couple of days uh, for the Nigerian Tax Research Network. So if you want to get more involved in tax research in Nigeria, this is the place. But what I want to do in this uh, short presentation is to pull out some of the lessons which we've learned from, particularly from across Africa, uh, which might be relevant to the Nigerian context. And many of these uh, Amin has already talked about in a little bit more detail, so I just want to proffer six key lessons which might be relevant. So the first lesson, and it may be an unpopular one, particularly for people who come to the Nigerian Economic Summit, is to tax rich people. Um, uh, there's a famous uh, joke about uh, Willie Sutton Jr., uh, the bank robber in the United States. And when he was asked, why do you rob banks? He answered, because that's where the money is. The reason you tax rich people, of course, is because that's where the money is. And yet many countries throughout Sub-Saharan Africa do quite a poor job of taxing rich people. Now, when I say taxing rich people, I don't mean PAYE on large salaries, which is where the focus is. The vast majority of personal income tax throughout Africa is collected from PAYE on salaries. However, the reality is that's actually a very small share of the wealth of the wealthy. The very wealthy need a special treatment to themselves. That doesn't necessarily mean a punitive treatment. In many countries, for example, you've found that uh, the, the amount of money that can be retrieved from high net worth individuals, uh, uh, which is the phrase that's used, is very substantial. Take the example of Uganda. What they did was they took a list and they simply listed the top 60 uh, tax, uh, lawyers in Uganda. You write down. Now, lawyers generally are not poor, and yet only 35% of them are paying any personal income tax. Only 5% of company directors were paying any personal income tax. Personal income tax is 2% of revenue in Sub-Saharan Africa, whereas it's around about 10% in the OECD. So one thing that Nigeria could do would be to put together specialist teams which look at a broad set of assets, not asset by asset, but looking at the individuals. Many individuals are perfectly happy to actually pay more tax if they're reminded of what their obligations are, particularly high net worth individuals, precisely because they have a reputation to maintain. In Zambia and Tanzania, when they set up these teams specifically to talk to high net worth individuals, they got benefit cost ratios of between 10 and 100 to 1. So these are relatively cheap interventions which have very big payoffs uh, for revenue. So the first lesson is tax rich people. The second lesson, which I, I think Amin gave a, an excellent uh, account of in a number of different dimensions, is to minimize exemptions. Um, what we find is that there are extensive exemptions, not just in Nigeria, but throughout uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. In six African countries, exemptions were a third of total tax. If you're giving away a third of total tax before you've even collected it, then obviously you're not going to collect nearly so much revenue. Now, the reason why tax exemptions are given is because people will say, we need them. We have an industrial policy. We want to boost. We want to encourage. We want investors to come in and so forth. These are all good things. And we've heard a lot during the course of the summit about uh, investment in industrial policy. However, in some surveys which have been done, 84% of investors said that tax exemptions weren't actually the thing that drove them. It's a very high percentage. That means if you're giving a tax exemption to somebody who actually isn't being driven by the tax exemption, they would like a tax exemption, of course, but the tax exemption isn't an important thing. What's important 
is having 24-7 power. What's important is having a good road. What is important is having legislative certainty, and so on and so forth. Often, the tax regime is somewhere down the line. So therefore, that suggests that there are ways of uh, providing tax exemptions which are targeted. Having clear criteria as to what those exemptions are for, having clear time limits on all exemptions so they don't just roll and roll and roll, as we saw with uh, Pioneer uh, uh, tax here, here in Nigeria, uh, getting that Pioneer exemption in the oil and gas industry rolled and rolled and rolled until eventually it was suspended a, a couple of years ago. Monitoring their use. If exemptions are to be given, let's understand whether they work. That can be measured. Let's make sure we monitor and measure that. And registering that such exemptions with the tax administration so that when they end, it's possible to shift people back over to the normal tax regime. So dealing with tax exemptions is one lesson which we learned from many countries would have a big impact upon revenue. Now here's an even more controversial one which we learn again from a wide variety of different countries, which is reducing tax expenditures. Tax expenditures are different from tax exemptions. Tax expenditures, you don't get the money in the first place because the revenue collecting authority spends the revenue before even remitting it to the government. And they can be very large. And the two globally which are largest, of course, are fuel subsidies and electricity subsidies. And just to give a sense of the scale, fuel subsidies globally are well over $100 billion, electricity subsidies more or less the same. And these numbers are a lot smaller than they were a few years ago. Uh, three or four years ago, they were around about $500 billion because the oil price was high. Well, now we have a rising oil price, so these numbers will be going up again uh, next year, almost certainly. In the Nigerian context, as we all know, this matters a great deal. Fuel subsidies are probably something, uh, NMPC uh, estimated in June, that there were 2.4 billion naira per day. This is 800 billion naira. That's about two-thirds of all corporation income tax. So therefore, tax expenditures, whether they're for fuel subsidies, electricity subsidies, or other forms of tax expenditures, have a big effect upon the amount of tax you collect. And this isn't just a problem for Nigeria, but it's a big problem for several other countries as well. So for, just as for exemptions, the solutions for this are to say, if we want to have a subsidy, fine, have a subsidy, make it clearly stated in the budget, and let's evaluate the effectiveness of such subsidies or such tax expenditures in order to make sure that they're actually doing what it is that we want them to do. The third lesson, I thought, well, I've got lesson four, so maybe I can't count, but anyway, use property taxes more. Um, I'm delighted that we have a very senior representative of the government in Kaduna here, because we'll hear more, I'm sure, about property tax uh, innovations which are happening in Kaduna. But across all of Africa, property taxes are very underutilized. In the OECD, property taxes are 1% to 2% of GDP. Here, or across Africa, they're probably 0.1% to 0.2% of GDP. So there is a huge scale for property taxation, whether it's land use taxation or, or similar. And the reason for that is simple. If one thinks of the development and growth story of Africa at the moment, it's a story of urbanization. Cities are booming. All sorts of new economic activities are starting up in cities, and as a result, retail prices uh, are of, of uh, real estate are going up very substantially. So as a consequence, it's extremely important that we capture some of that value. And property taxes are also quite progressive. So the lessons that we learn from other countries is that property taxes should be an important part of one's portfolio, and at the moment in many countries, they're not. Of course, one of the reasons for that is the difficulties in valuation. But the difficulties in valuation are not impossible. And if one professionalizes and modernizes and simplifies the process of valuation of assets, then it is possible to raise significant revenue from property, as the Lagos and indeed the Kaduna governments are showing. The fifth lesson, again echoing some of the comments in the previous discussions, is investing in tax administration. It's all very well to have good tax policy. We have a nice new tax policy 2017 in Nigeria. It's all very well to have good tax legislation. Very important to have that. We'll hear more, I'm sure, from Professor Shamoran on that. But ultimately, you only get the revenue if the tax administration is good. And that needs capacity, well-trained staff. It needs coordination and cooperation. It's simply not 
acceptable or not effective in countries if only the Inland Revenue Service is responsible for trying to get the revenue. It's important to get coordination between the ministries, between banks and credit card agencies, between utilities, between corporate registries and so forth. Only with these third party sources is it possible to come up to a clear and coherent picture of what tax is owed. And of course it's important that it's clean. One of the things which we might talk a little bit about later on is the survey which we did with the fiscal round table of the NESG looking at Nigerians' perceptions of the tax system. And in many cases, they felt that the tax system wasn't clean, wasn't being fair to them. So ensuring that staff are not enriching themselves as a result of the process is essential in order to build trust uh, in the whole system of tax administration. And to use existing tools. There are many lessons to be learned from other countries. There is a tax administration diagnostic assessment tool, the TADA, which is run by the African Tax Administration Forum. And so using a tool like that can help one to learn the lessons as to how effective one's tax administration is. And then the final lesson which we can learn from other countries' approaches uh, to taxation is to be fair and to deliver. Firstly, on the fairness side of things, there's a great deal of evidence that in order to get voluntary compliance, and voluntary compliance is key, you have to have trust and you have to have reciprocity. People have to believe in the tax system. We all loved the bit of the video where the lady said, oh, I don't trust anyone, I don't even trust myself. That is a very common reaction in many countries about the tax system. Only if one builds trust do you get the buy-in necessary to actually get voluntary compliance. But in addition to that, one has to have reciprocity. There has to be something, as I think one of the uh, respondents in the video said, we don't get anything back. If you believe that your money isn't going anywhere or it's just going into somebody else's pocket, it's not delivering you any services, then naturally people are skeptical about engaging in the tax system. And so one of the strong lessons that we receive from other countries is that this, this issue of trust and this issue of reciprocity, of getting something back for the taxation, is a critical element to building higher voluntary compliance and therefore getting a far better tax take. So that's my six lessons. I think let's get on with the discussion. Thank you.